I have always had the deep understanding for myself that if anything was going to move forward in my life, that I was going to have to be responsible for making that happen. I know that to be true now and can articulate it as you are responsible for your life. And if you're sitting around waiting on somebody to save you, to fix you, to even help you, you are wasting your time because only you have the power to take responsibility to move your life forward. And the sooner you get that, the sooner your life gets into gear. This is what I know from doing 25 years and thousands and thousands of interviews on The Oprah Show. It does not matter where you come from. I have seen people come out of the desert, walk across the desert, being born in the most dire of circumstances. Doesn't matter what your mama did, whether she did or had a PhD or no D, what matters is now, this moment, and your willingness to forgive the past, take responsibility, and move forward. You need activation energy to start the change. That's the key to creating any kind of change. That's the ethical requirement of individual being in the proper sense is to constantly know that you're not what you couldn't be, to take responsibility for that and to commit yourself like body and soul to the attainment of that ideal. If you think about the times when you're at peace with yourself with regards to how you're conducting yourself in the world, it's almost always conditions under which you would offer responsibility. The more guilt I think that you can experience is the sure knowledge that you're not even taking care of yourself. So that you're leaving that responsibility to others. There is no capability difference between you and someone you consider to be an ultimate role model of success. The only difference is they've learned to use their mind and body with more power on a consistent basis. They've learned to manage their state. They've learned to use their body effectively. Whether they know it or not consciously, it doesn't matter. And they've learned to control their mental focus. Remember, whatever we concentrate our focus on consistently and strive to learn from it and make new distinctions about it, we will get great at it. I need you to evaluate yourself and ask yourself a question. How are you? When you hear the word, know does it when you have a trial or a tribulation, how are you wired? You hold on to it. You recycle it. Do you realize that every day you thought you wasn't going to make it? Do you remember them days when you thought it was absolutely unbearable and you thought you wasn't going to endure that one? Do you know that your survival rate for every last one of them bad days is 100%? You survived every hater. You survived all the evictions. You survived the firings. You survived all the trouble you ever been in. Your survival rate is 100%. One thing you gotta understand, my friend, is that you're supposed to fail. You're supposed to fail because failure is the stepping stone to success. It's not just cliche. Failure is an experience that lends to wisdom that ultimately makes you a stronger version of yourself. Like until I make my dreams become a reality, I'm not quitting. I don't care how much money I have to invest. I'm going to continue to do this until I become successful. All right? I've got a rule called uh, the show up rule. All right? Somebody said you can pretend that you care, but you can't pretend that you're there. The only way you can be there is to show up. And what I'm asking you to do for me, you will never be a failure if you show up every single day. Every single day when I come, I show up and I let failure know. Failure is not an option. So what it takes 12 years to get a four. Failure is not an option. Failure is not an option. You can't even let it think it's in your brain. It's just not even a second. You have to know that this thing is going to work. From there for high water, whatever it is that I set out to do, it may not happen in six months, it may not happen in a year, it may not happen in two years, but at some point, my dream is going to become a reality. Concentrate every minute like a Roman, like a man, on doing what's in front of you with precise and genuine seriousness, tenderly, willingly, with justice. And on freeing yourself from all other distractions, yes, you can, if you do everything as if it were the last thing you were doing in your life and stop being aimless, stop letting your emotions override what your mind tells you, stop being hypocritical, self 
self-centered, irritable. You see how few things you have to do to live a satisfying and reverent life. If you can manage this, that's all even the gods can ask of you. Do not disturb yourself by picturing your life as a whole. Do not assemble in your mind the many and varied troubles which have come to you in the past and will come again in the future, but ask yourself with regard to every present difficulty. What is there in thereable and beyond? Endurance. You would be ashamed to confess it. And then remind yourself that it is not the future or what has passed that afflicts you, but always the present. And the power of this is much diminished if you take it in isolation and call your mind to task if it thinks that it cannot stand up to it when taken on its own. Think of your many years of procrastination, how the gods have repeatedly granted you further periods of grace, of which you have taken no advantage. It is time now to realize the nature of the universe to which you belong and of that controlling power whose offspring you are, and to understand that your time has a limit set to it. Use it then to advance your enlightenment, or it will be gone and never in your power again. Men seek retreats for themselves, houses in the country, seashores and mountains, and thou too art one to desire such things very much. But this is altogether a mark of the most common sort of men, for it is in thy power whenever thou shalt choose to retire into thyself. For nowhere, either with more quiet or more freedom from trouble, does a man retire than into his own soul, particularly when he has within him such thoughts that by looking into them he is immediately in perfect tranquility. And I affirm that tranquility is nothing else than the good ordering of the mind. Constantly then give to thyself this retreat and renew thyself. And let thy principles be brief and fundamental, which as soon as thou shalt recur to them will be sufficient to cleanse the soul completely and to send thee back free from all discontent with the things to which thou returnest. For with what art thou discontented? With the badness of men? Recall to thy mind this conclusion, that rational animals exist for one another, and that to endure is a part of justice, and that men do wrong involuntarily. And consider how many already after mutual enmity, suspicion, hatred and fighting have been stretched dead, reduced to ashes, and be quiet at last. But perhaps thou art dissatisfied with that which is assigned to thee out of the universe. Recall to thy recollection this alternative. Either there is providence or atoms, fortuitous concurrence of things, or remember the arguments by which it has been proved that the world is a kind of political community and be quiet at last. But perhaps corporeal things will still fasten upon thee. Consider then further that the mind mingles not with the breath, whether moving gently or violently, when it has once drawn itself apart and discovered its own power. And think also of all that thou hast heard and assented to about pain and pleasure, and be quiet at last. But perhaps the desire of the thing called fame will torment thee. Mm -hmm. See how soon everything is forgotten, and look at the chaos of infinite time on each side of the present, and the emptiness of applause, and the changeableness and want of judgment in those who pretend to give praise, and the narrowness of the space within which it is circumscribed and be quiet at last. For the whole earth is a point, and how small a nook in it is this thy dwelling, and how few are there in it, and what kind of people are they who will praise thee?